Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. One of the biggest concerns that a lot of people have when they're starting down the road of prepping and preparedness is having a worry that they might be wasting their time, their resources, their money on whatever you know disasters they're preparing for. Uh, and that's kind of a valid concern. I know that over the last couple of years, if if the events over the last couple of years haven't illustrated to people the value of general emergency preparedness. I'm not sure what type of life experience people are, are waiting for, but there's certainly something to be said for the idea of, you know, if you prepare for disaster A and disaster B ends up happening, you know, you might feel like you wasted your effort, you know, preparing for A when B happened, or if you prepared for B, A might happen. And it can be a little bit uh, nerve wracking, you know, trying to make the right choice and not make a mistake because, you know, no matter how rich all of us are, you know, we may have unlimited money, although, you know, the vast majority of us, that's not the case, but the one resource that, you know, none of us have unlimited access to is time. And if you're going to be putting your time in one place or the other, you really have to figure out, you know, where you're going to be putting that time, where you're going to put that effort. And like for me and, you know, most of the rest of us, you have to think about where you're going to be putting your money as well. So in this video, what I want to talk about is how to be sure that you're not going to be wasting your time, your effort, or your money, or your resources, or whatever on whatever preps that you're working on. Now, there's a couple different ways of doing that. You know, the first level way, and I think the way most people think about it, is to try to think about, you know, kind of the law of probability and likelihood. You know, if you live in an area where there, there tend to be wildfires, you know, there's probably a good chance that it's a good idea to prep for wildfires. If you live in an area that's prone to flooding, you know, same kind of deal. It probably, it's probably a better chance that you're going to, you know, not waste your time if you prepare for the potential of a flood. If you live here on planet Earth and you're prepping for aliens to invade by airdropping bird flu infected clown zombies, there's a reasonable chance that you're going to put in all that effort and it's going to all be for naught because it doesn't happen all that frequently. That is one way of kind of approaching it is to try to think about the law of probabilities and you know what is most likely in your area and that's a good idea. It's a good exercise to do that. But I'm going to be talking about it from a different angle in this video and this is going to be kind of coming at it from the point of view that it doesn't matter whether that wildfire happens or whether that flood happens or whether those aliens invade by airdropping bird flu infected clown zombies nailed at that time. Uh, we're going to talk about how you can avoid wasting your time even if the disaster doesn't happen. And that kind of takes it to a whole other level. And this is the way that I like to, uh, you know, approach all of my prepping and preparedness and, you know, all the things I do in my life in general. I, I and the approach that I'm going to talk about is the idea of multiple benefits, side benefits, side effects, and kind of corollary um, attributes of actions. I'm going to give you a few examples and hopefully you'll get kind of the brain juices flowing in your own head and it might, uh, it might help you to kind of figure out about what types of things you want to prepare for, what types of actions you might want to take for that. Uh, I'm recording this video right here in my fallout shelter. Now, six months ago, this was not a fallout shelter. Six months ago, this was a root cellar. But it was a root cellar that was made such that it could be easily turned into a fallout shelter. And we did that for the reason that, you know, we didn't know, you know, I think it was like two years ago when we put this thing together, we didn't know that it would be particularly likely that the world would be headed down a direction where nuclear exchanges were uh, possible or possibly likely. And unfortunately, it seems like the world might be headed down that direction at the moment. So, uh, you know, it was good that we did that. But back two years ago, when we put this thing in, uh, you know, there wasn't any necessary writing on the wall that that was going to be likely, other than the fact that we're heading towards resource scarcity. And when resources get scarce, people tend to start fighting over them and people have nuclear weapons. So, yeah, I guess, you, you, you know, you could have thought to yourself, okay, you know, this is something we could get to, but it wasn't something I was imminently planning for. Uh, but we put it together so that it could be turned into a fallout shelter because it didn't take that much extra effort to do so. And even if there was never a nuclear exchange and we never had a, you know, huddle in here and, and, you know, hide from the outside, and hopefully we don't, but even if that stuff never happens, the fact that we put this thing together is going to be a benefit anyway because we made it as a root cellar. And a root cellar has all sorts of benefits. If you have a lot of food from your garden for that season, you have a place to store it all winter. If you, there's a sale at the grocery store, you can take advantage of it and buy lots of extra you know, squash or pumpkins or whatever. It gives you like a nice uh, refrigerator to store things in. Uh, so the fact that we put this thing together, it wasn't it was made so it could be a fallout shelter, but it wasn't specifically for that. So it gives us all sorts of benefits independently of whether that, that disaster happens or not. In getting this place uh, prepared to be 
you know, used as a fallout shelter. There were all sorts of things that we did, uh, you know, in terms of that. The first thing I did was I put a bunch of extra dirt and rocks and stuff over my head to add extra shielding. If there's a, you know, a layer of radioactive dust that falls on top of this structure, uh, initially when we built it as a root cellar, I didn't put that much dirt on top. I think it was like somewhere around like 14 to 18 inches or, or so of dirt. I wanted more, so I added more dirt. Now, that was a lot of work. Moving all that dirt, I had to like uh, shave all the grass off the top, I put the grass off to the side, put more dirt on top, then moved all the grass back. It was a whole process. And even if we never need to use this place as a fallout shelter, what I did up there to add all that extra dirt still has a benefit for this place as a root cellar because it's going to help to stabilize the temperature a lot more. Now in the winter time, it's gonna stay a pretty good cool temperature no matter what, but in the summer, we would, it would get too warm in here to use it as a refrigerator. And having all that extra dirt on top, at least so far, seems to be helping to stabilize the temperature and making it more of an underground kind of 50 degree temperature in here. So even if we didn't need any of that rock and dirt I put up on top as shielding, it's giving me benefits you know, anyways. One other thing that I uh, added in here in order to uh, to make it so that this place is a more functional kind of uh, fallout shelter is I added a sink. Uh, now, you know, the side benefits of a sink are kind of limited, but one really great one is that this area needs to be dehumidified. It gets too humid in here, so we run a dehumidifier, and I always would have to take the dehumidifier and dump it outside. Now I can run the dehumidifier right into the sink, I can dump the bucket in the sink, and I don't have to make extra trips outside. And I know it sounds like, oh, boo-hoo, practice. You have to walk like 12 feet in that direction to dump it. Well, in the wintertime, I'd have to, uh, you know, my boots would get all clogged up with snow. I'd try to kick them off the best I could so I'm not carrying snow in here. I get the bucket and I go back outside to dump it and I get all caked up with snow again. I come back in, I have to try to clean my boots off. It was kind of a process. Now it's super easy. I just have to come in and I dump it into the sink. Another thing that we set up in here are bunk beds. And now I built the bunk beds so that they can also be used as extra shelving. So, you know, even if we never have to sleep in them and God hopes we never actually have to, but even if that never happens, it's a totally useful shelf. So whenever I'm approaching some kind of a problem in terms of prepping and preparedness, whatever action I'm going to be taking, I like to make sure that that action is something that is gonna give me benefit whether or not that disaster ever happens. And then I know there are some things in the world that, um, you know, that just doesn't really work so much for it. For example, in here we have some Geiger counters. We could use those Geiger counters in order to figure out, you know, whether it's safe to go outside or what the radiation levels are outside. Uh, you know, that has kind of limited use outside of the, the field of, you know, trying to survive a nuclear holocaust, to be frank. But even those Geiger counters, they're good as uh, educational tools. You know, my, my boy homeschools, we've been able to use them for that, you know, learning about radiation. Uh, I've been able to uh, use them to track uh, the radiation content of fish. You know, after the Fukushima uh, nuclear meltdown, uh, you know, there was concern about whether, you know, the radiation going out into the, uh, the ocean was going to cause a problem with fish stocks. Some people were thinking it was just gonna kill everyone right away. Other people were saying, oh, it's just so little, it's so little, it's not gonna bother anyone. I like to actually find out for myself. And I use my uh, Geiger counter to, uh, to track the radiation. And you could see after Fukushima, there was a rise in radiation and then it kind of fell back off and I haven't actually tested in a couple of years or so, so I don't know where it is at the moment. But you know, if you're creative, you can always find kind of side benefits of different types of things. And that is a way that I approach all, not only that my preps and my preparedness in life, but anything that I do in life. I try to get the most benefit out of every action that I, I can. Sometimes it takes a little bit of thinking. Sometimes it takes a little bit of, um, you know, uh, stepping back and, uh, being a little patient with things, you know, uh, instead of just, you know, it's easy to just decide that you, you need something. Like, uh, you know, you watch some fear porn kind of prepping video and they say, you gotta go out and you gotta buy X, Y, or Z. Uh, you know, so you immediately go out and get X, Y, or Z. But if you think about it and you think about, well, what, what is the role, what is the need that this X, Y, and Z kind of item or whatever would fulfill and think about other ways that you can solve that problem and think about whether those uh, those other alternate uh, kind of approaches to that might have kind of side benefits. One of my favorite is food. Uh, you know, that's one of the basic things that you need for prepping and preparedness. We all need food, we all need, uh, we all need water. And uh, I like to kind of approach that stuff in a way where, uh, you know, I'm thinking about, well, what is the benefit of prepping this food? Uh, you know, 
obviously, eventually I'm going to buy the food, but if I'm thinking about prepping, you know, a lot of food you know, and get in large quantities, what, what is some kind of like a side benefit that I can get to prepping all this like large quantities of food? And one of them is that when you buy stuff in bulk very frequently, not all the time, but very frequently when you buy stuff in bulk in large quantities, you get it for a discount. You know, if I am buying oats and I buy a 25 pound bag of oats, I'm going to get it for a lot less per pound than I'm going to get it if I buy it in a one pound bag. So that is a great way of you know, thinking about prepping and preparing. So if I'm going to buy a lot of food, buy it in a way where I'm also going to save money. So even if I never need to have like tons of food in my house because, you know, the grocery stores are always accessible during all my life and it's never really a problem, just simply having pre uh, stock the stuff up in a way that's going to give you that side benefit of saving money adds a benefit to your life and makes your life better and easier and, uh, you know, more enjoyable because you aren't having to use so many resources for, you know, buying food because you're giving yourself a coupon every single time you go out. So that, that's the message for this video is think about uh, different ways of doing things. Think about things that have side benefits and whenever you can angle a prep so that it, you're getting side benefits off of it, it kind of, it frees you from being uh, shackled to the idea of, um, you know, I'm going to waste my time if the disaster doesn't happen. because. Preps and preparedness, this is all insurance. And you know, if you get car insurance, you know, you don't want to be buying car insurance hoping that you're gonna be in a car crash. The whole idea is that you get the stuff so that you have it, and you know, if God forbid this thing ever happens, you know, you have that to fall back on. But none of us want to ever have to end up well, not none of us, there's some crazy people online, but the sane people among us don't ever want to actually have to use this stuff in an emergency situation. We want to have it if there's an emergency situation, but we hope that there's not. So if we're going to do all this stuff, we want to be getting some of those side benefits anyway so that all the effort that we're putting into this stuff is a benefit to our life either way. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.